What's up, fam? Brother Hill here. Got another video for you all. Pray all has been well. Pray everybody has been prayed up. Been enjoying themselves, enjoying their family, enjoying their time, getting in alignment, reading, studying, things like that. Uh, very happy to be here. Very happy to be here to share some of my studies with you guys. Today is going to be on uh, how do you, you kill a man without fear? And that came about from... Uh, you know, some of my studies that I was doing in regards to uh, what the law is saying about us having a spirit not of the world, right? And a spirit which is from God, and also that He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind, which in return, again, is the spirit of God. He pinched off a little piece of Himself and placed it in, within us. So we are too, we didn't come in the world being fearful. Somebody had to put fear in us. So that question came about, how do you kill a man without fear? And again, the answer came that you have to put fear in the man. Uh, you have to put fear in the individual, the woman, the man, the child, whatever. And it made so much sense to me because our enemy, he's on a serious mission. He has a threefold mission. And he will stop at nothing to fulfill that mission. So... If at any time he can make sin look comical, he can make it look alluring, he can make it look tempted, uh, temptable, uh, anything that's pleasing to the ears or to the eyes to make us get out of alignment with God, uh, have people that he's already influenced and have taken the bait that he feeding with money, drugs, or whatever the vices is to do whatever it is that he wants them to do to manipulate the masses. So be it, he's going to do that. And once you are out of alignment, you pop that little bubble called the hedge of protection that the Most High gives us daily all the time. And you become susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. And one way he does that is by instilling fear. People that's already out of alignment, people who already took the bait, that's influenced, they do things and they got consequences that come with it. So many so people get killed, they kill themselves, they get hooked on drugs, uh, you name it. And then the media, which is also influenced by Mr. Threefold, you know, and they amplify it. They broadcast it out there to the masses and they focus in on it. They don't even look at the whole spectrum of anything. They just strictly on the fear aspect of it, the, the very... The grimy part of it, the killing and the murderous and the drugs and all of that stuff. And they just instill that fear because don't nobody want those type of things, obviously, to happen to them. So once he makes you think or make people think that, okay, man, it's cool, man, you can do what you want. Look, man, so-and-so over here, they're making millions upon millions of dollars. they still alive. They hadn't even had a hair honed on their head. And the other ones over here, they've been doing business like this for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Live alone, like, but if you get in the word, God say that, yeah, he allowed them to do that. He think they think that they're getting over, but they're really not getting over. They've actually shot themselves in the foot. But the Lord is quick and he 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 deals and he protects his righteous people, you know. And it's still, regardless of whatever they're doing, we ain't to do, regardless. That's just a non-negotiable thing. But again, the enemy himself, he will go above and beyond to fulfill this threefold mission. That's to rob, steal, or rob, kill, and destroy at any means necessary. And we see it all over the place because why? Because people don't have the knowledge. We have to do better with spending time with God, spending time in the Word, spending time with some courses, some studies, some something. For some fellowshipping going on so we can get some knowledge, some wisdom, and some understanding. Uh, because there are principles that are set in place for us to, to live by. And if we go outside of the principles, then nothing works for you. And then when nothing works for you, then, you know, we get bent out of shape. We get mad and we want to throw temper tantrums or we want to get ill with people, get ill with God, whatever the case may be. But God is saying, look, I got everything here. It's set up for you. You know, all the provisions that you needed uh, was already set up before you got here, and most of which are within you. <laughs> but we as people, when we do get outside of alignment with them, 
when we fall victim of Mr. Threefold making things on the outside look real alluring, you know, we constantly stay focused on everything on the outside. We'll go to the moon, we'll go to Saturn, we'll go to Japan, we'll go to the depths of the ocean, but we won't go and be our own exploration program uh, process and go deep within and to find a, a whole treasure field that's in there that was placed in us before we came here, you know? And that's just where we at this day and age. And people, they unconsciously practice and and, 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 and knowingly practice free range sinning, you know? And it's not cool because if you into scripture and you have the understanding and the wisdom and the knowledge, you know that not just the person who's committing the ignorant act or the, the blind act of sin is affected. It's the people that are around them that's affected too. They have generations of people who are affected by things that they descent, that their uh, ancestors had done prior to them even coming on the scene. And I'm like, yo, man, that ain't cool. But again, God is a sovereign God. He's He's loyal to his word. He can't break his word. So again, we have to know the principles of Bible. Starting off really with the Ten Commandments and the basic things that he's given us. Love one another as I have loved you. Follow all of my commandments and all of my creeds. I know some people will say, because I used to be like this too, man, I'm a work in progress. Oh, man, it's going to take time. Yes, it's going to take time. Yes, it's going to take effort because it's something that we don't hardly ever hear anybody speak of. And then whenever somebody is trying to implement it to us, we either blow it off or we thinking, okay, well, this person got ulterior motives or they just want money from me or whatever the case may be. But whenever the Holy Spirit is convicting you, you're going to know it. Regardless of that, it's still your responsibility, our responsibility to have a personal relationship with God because he's a personal father. You know, we don't have an excuse to be living in somebody else's house who's providing everything for us. The air we breathe, the food that we eat, the houses and the material that the people build, the houses and apartment complexes and vehicles that we get to take and experience, you know, and we're using temporarily while we're on this earth, you know. Uh, it's just disrespectful because, again, you wouldn't let anybody else come to your house, spend a week there, or a long week there, and enjoy all of your resources, all of your food and everything, and won't even get up in the morning and say, hey, good morning to you, or acknowledge you, period. They act like they're in a house by themselves without you even being there, you know? And that's not cool, man. We got to get away from that. Uh, and it can be done. It can be done. We just got to put forth the effort. We put forth the effort to do everything else. Everything else that we want to do, go to the clubs, get our hair done, go to Bath and Body Works, stand in the two-hour line, go to the mall, stand in the two-hour line for Michael Jordan. We go all over the place, fly here, fly there, and ain't nothing got nothing. To, none of what we spend and devote our time to has anything to do with getting us closer in alignment with God, helping us fulfill purpose, speaking in regards to the kingdom, establishing new territory in His kingdom in His foreign land called Earth. None of that, you know, it's all about the individual and we have to break out of that mindset. If we don't break out of that mindset, we don't wake up from that slumber. He tells you, okay, well, I'm going to come up on you and I come up on you. You already know what it's hidden for, you know, I mean, come on, man. You got to be able to sit down and make time to read. The words become flesh. The word speaks to you as you're reading it. But you got to believe that. Just like how we go and we go to any fast food establishment or any restaurant, and we're sitting there looking over the menu board, and them people is talking to us through that little microphone, thus the menu board is speaking back to us as we read over the menu. We got faith and we believe solely that that order that we see, the thing we see on that menu board that we place in this order for is going to come out at that window exactly like how we said that we wanted to that they displaying, that they're saying that it's going to be. We hadn't even met the person that's behind the microphone. We don't see them until we go around that to go pick up the order. But we got faith in that. We got that much faith in that. You know what I'm saying? But we don't have faith in the word. We don't have faith in God. Or we got like stagnant faith, uh, straddle the fence faith, uh, you know, chicken wing faith. You know what I'm saying? And that's not cool. Can't be worked on. Got to put forth the effort, though. 
I don't put forth the effort. Like I said, people put their whole family in a, in a car, drive to McDonald's, and take orders from everybody and order through a menu to an establishment. You know what I'm saying? Placing an order and have faith that everything that they're ordering is going to come out the way that it is on that board. That this lady or this man or this person who they can't see is speaking through that microphone from the, the, the menu board speaking back to them. They're going to present it back to them, the order to them like it is. And while they're waiting in the line, they're looking over the menu board before they get to the window. So they probably think, okay, well, the next time I come over here, whenever I had this need to suit my hunger or fulfill my hunger, I'm going to get this, 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 and this. Okay, we're well, reading the Bible the same way. You go, you get the Bible. You read it, it reads back to you. You recite the words back to it in prayer. God acts off his word. I'm careful to watch over my word. You place, you know, you pray to him and you speak to him in regards to what's going on, what he can do for you to help you to be in alignment with him. And you have faith and you wait. And while you're waiting, you know, you get familiar with the rest of the scripture. You get familiar and thus in turns meaning you're getting more familiar with, with the father, you know, and what's going on around you. So you can be better equipped instead of just being, you know, like little lost individuals going all over the place, being led by culture, fashion, music, and what it, political views and all that other jazz that they're doing out here. You know, we are little gods, sons of the most high, men and women. And we ought to act according to that, man. That's something. That's serious, man. That's, <laughs> That's far beyond any any monetary thing that's down here on this earth, any physical possession, any job, any relationship. That's key. That's priority. Who wouldn't want to know about their creator in their own self? I got a problem with my call. I'm not taking my call to a shady tree mechanic. I'm taking my call to the people who I got it from at the dealership. I buy it from the dealer. All right, here you go, Dodge. Take this car. Something wrong with it. Fix it. I don't know how to fix it. It's the same with us. God wants us. To, hey, some little flop. Something is wrong with you. I know something is wrong with you. I'm the only one that can fix it. And besides that, I want you to know how to fix it before something even happens. Trying to make you your own MD, your own medical doctor, your own situations in your own life. But overall, I'm still the head honcho. But you got a lot of the same power that I have. You're entitled to it. I got a piece of me in you. And you're supposed to know this. Not supposed to be controlled by clothes, raiment, McDonald's, fast food, food. What you going to eat? What you going to sleep? All this other stuff that he told us not to worry about that we worry about on a regular basis, man. And it sucks because you see it everywhere. It's everywhere. You get online, it's all over social media, which I hardly ever get on, but it's on there. And our children, we got our kids, they're exposed to all of that. Anybody who got kids, it's our obligation from the Most High to be teaching them everything that they're supposed to know about him and about his kingdom, which is active and present right now. Right now. Not using them for a pawn to get back at the other parent. Not using them for a paycheck to stay stagnant because we wicked and we lazy and we don't want to go to work. Not using them just to be, you know, strict or just a disciplinarian to them because our parents were disciplinary perfectionists at being disciplinarians to us and all this other stuff that people go and do, you know? But we miss it because we're thinking only about ourselves. And we got so many distractions nowadays. And it's like, man, you really have to hone in and make time. Make time to know the Lord. Make time to have a relationship with Jesus, to humble ourselves, at least try. I will always tell people at work, especially my new guys, look, I don't need to hear about your whole life history. I mean, I'm going to sit here and listen to you. You can tell me about your work background. That's cool. Some of it I relate to, some of it I don't. But it don't matter. All you need to do is try. If you see all us over here working, be over here working. If you don't know what to grab and what to do, I got you. I'm your mentor. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to lead by example, but don't stay back there in the cut way over here. And we over here working and we constantly moving on to the next task, to the next task. We got to keep calling, keep calling. After a while, they get old, man. 
You know, after a while, you're going to be like the guy that nobody don't want on the crew no more because you ain't getting with the program. But we're not going to give up on you like that. But still, at least step in there. Take the initiative to try. People can work with individuals that try. I'm one of them individuals that's like that. I, you give me something to work with, I can, I can, we can critique that. I'm not going to just give up on you because I was the individual that, man, I had to ask the same question a bunch of times. I mean, I would get in there and do things and probably be, you know, I just wanted to make sure my hands was in there with, the, with, with everybody else because I wasn't lazy, not by a long shot. But I knew that I couldn't just stand around and not do nothing because I don't learn like that. I learned about hands-on, you know, hands-on and obviously teaching too, but I'm more of a hands-on individual. And some people are like that. Some people are more hands-on, like with everything that I'm sharing with you guys and that me and Brother Tyson share with you all. Uh, you pick it up, run with it right away. I mean, it's it resonates right away. Some people are going to have to get up here, speak, and also have a dry erase board and to share things and pinpoint things with them because I was like that. The line of work that I've been doing for as long as I have is set up like that because you can't see in a well 18,000 feet. Everything with the well that we work on is completely dark and it's, it's in the ground, underground. There's no cameras. There's nothing. All we have is a manual, a procedure to work off of from the people who drilled the well. That is it. From whatever upper man, show base, upper management, okay, we want this well drilled like this, put this here, log this there, log that there. That's all we have to go off of. And if we deviate from that, it can cost everybody their lives. We seen that in 2010 with uh, the Deepwater Horizon. The, the whole rig blew up. And it's 12 people, 11 people that they never found. They blew up. You know, a lot of casualties, man. But I say that to say that in regards to scripture, in regards to our spirit, you can't see your spirit. I can see the physical side of the attributes of having the spirit because the spirit is housed within the body, right? Well, God is all spirit. Everything in the Bible is is, is relevant. It is alive. It is the living word. And it is for you to feed on for your spirit. If you do not feed your spirit and you run into life, or life runs into you, and you don't know what time it is, what time of day it is, when, when things happen, you're not going to be able to adjust to the things that's going on in the world as they come because change is inevitable. You can't get around it. You can't. <clears throat> I don't care who you are, how much money you got, or how many people you're connected to. It's just something you cannot do. Uh, I know that was a little bit. Glad to be able to stop in and share with you guys, like I said, uh, back in town now, don't have to worry about the whole internet connection thing going on <laughs> at work and stuff. So it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to sit here and to be able to share with you guys some of the things that I've been going through with my teachings and my classes. Uh, anybody need help, further help with anything, I urge you to go and get the Monroe Global app. Uh, it's been a very great help for me. Helps me understand things. Dr. Monroe dedicated most of all his life to condensing and simplifying a lot of what is written and putting it into uh, understandable uh, contact for us, uh, understandable format for us that relates to 21st century, you know, and a lot of it is just basically going to the original Hebrew text and giving a meaning to what it all says. So I thank you guys for your time. Thank you for checking in, watching the video. Be sure to Share it with somebody. Sharing is caring. Sharing is a form of giving. Uh, so if you know anybody who could use or benefit from any of the information shared, be, uh, be more than happy to share it with you. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. God bless. Peace.